houses rise and fall, as T.S. Eliot said. Like other Lakeland Valleys, Lowswater is a place of lost and deserted dwellings. A few ruins are still named on the map, but these represent only the latest phases of desertion. Once a dwelling ceased to be inhabited and became a roofless ruin, its name, like its fabric, would slowly crumble and fade from view. The lost farmsteads of Lowswater were part of a long process, stretching back to the 17th century. Loss was rarely sudden. An exception was the destruction of Bargate by fire around 1910. The trees surrounding the farmstead survive, but the house and buildings are no more than grassed over mounds of rubble. A line of ash and sycamore trees, a cart's width away from a field wall, the only sign of the track down to the burnt out ruins. In most cases, the loss was part of a general trend towards the accumulation of farms into larger holdings and the consequent desertion of the houses attached to land which ceased to be farmed separately. That was the story of the ruins at Peel. In 1840, it was the heart of a small farm consisting of 16 acres of scattered fields, mostly of ploughland and meadow. Peel was home to the farmer, John Clark, and his family, and there was a second household there as well, consisting of a waller called William Lancaster and his wife. The censuses of 1851 and 1861 show that the Lancasters were still there, but the farmhouse had become a cottage, housing a farm labourer, his wife and five children. Ten years later, only one house remained, home to a widowed charwoman, 40 years old, and her three children. By 1881, Peel was uninhabited. Today, spreading sycamores mark the entrance to the site on the back of the green fields of the rounded headland on the shore of the lake. The mossy, grassed-over footings of the house contrast with the raw, stone, ruined walls of the attached barn, which remained in use for several decades after the house became an empty shell. To pause by the ruins of Peel can bring the past closer, in the way described so evocatively by Dudley Hoyes, who wrote of similar ruins at Mitredale Head near Eskdale. To sit here in silence for a while is to sense soundless movement and grow aware that you are not quite alone. The shadows of history still creep invisibly around. Where men have once lived and gone, there always lingers a feeling of their presence. <laughs>